Hello everyone, welcome to the video on lipid lowering drugs. The major problem in 21st century is hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia means increased levels of lipids in the blood. This eventually results in narrowing of coronary blood vessels and that is what results in myocardial ischemia or heart attack. So in this video, let's explore what are the drugs used to reduce the levels of lipids. Now, lipid lowering drugs they reduce levels of cholesterol and triglycerides. The commonly used classes are statins and fibrates, whereas the other classes are bilacidrazines, niacin and azetimibe. Let us explore all these classes. Now the first one, statins. Now, the major goal of statin is overall lipid levels are decreased. Now lipids, when you say we have VLDL, very low density lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins and cholesterol. Cholesterol esters are also there. Triglycerides. All these levels will get reduced by using statins. Now, how, how does it happen? They inhibit an, an enzyme known as HMG-CoA reductase. This is a rate-limiting step in cholesterol biosynthesis. So, cholesterol is synthesized by using this prominent enzyme. And, and this enzyme is inhibited by this statins. Now, these, are, these drugs can be used to treat stroke, heart attack, peripheral vascular diseases. <clears throat> now, when you get into the details, now the drugs like simvastatin, lovastatin, pravastatin, atorvastatin, rosvastatin belongs to statin classes. Now, atorvastatin, rosvastatin are more potent and have longer half-life. Now, one thing we, you need to be reminded is, these drugs should be taken only in the evenings. The reason is, in the evenings, the cholesterol biosynthesis takes place in human body. So this is a kind of chronopharmacology that means you need to take the drugs at a particular period of time. So when evening the biosynthesis is taking place, you take this drug, the enzyme is inhibited and biosynthesis is inhibited. If we take these drugs in the morning, by evening they will get metabolized, there won't be any use. So now why, how, how do they show this action is, see when you see the drugs, the drug structure is very similar to HMG-CoA. Now understand this enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase means hydro <coughs> excuse me. Hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A is reduced by this enzyme, hence it is known as reductase. Now, these drugs, the structure is very similar to HMG CoA. Because of that structural similarity, the enzyme goes, binds with the drug, and enzyme is inhibited. Cholesterol biosynthesis will not take place. Now, what is the effect of this? See, when cholesterol biosynthesis is inhibited, see, all the time in the blood, we need certain amount of cholesterol is required. Why? new cells when they form the new cells need cell membrane which is made up of a lipid bilayer and the lipid is cholesterol so to get that cholesterol when biosynthesis of cholesterol is inhibited liver increases a particular levels of receptors known as cholesterol receptors and ldl receptors now what happens ldl is very rich in cholesterol so all these ldls are taken back into the liver and from them cholesterol is synthesized. Again, liver also increases the uptake of triglycerides and VLDLs. Now, at the same time, it increases the production of HDL. Now, let us understand why all these things are happening. Before that, see, LDL is known as bad cholesterol. The reason why it is called as bad cholesterol is it can get accumulated in our blood vessel and cause reduced blood supply and myocardial infraction. So, Statins will reduce the LDL levels in the blood and they get back to liver. Now, HDL is known as good cholesterol. The reason why it is known as good cholesterol is HDL will go and removes this LDL and takes it back to liver. So, whatever the vascular LDL levels are there, they goes back to liver and it provides liver with LDL molecules and it is known as good cholesterol. So, always HDL should be more, LDL should be less. Now, statins, when they reduce cholesterol levels, liver will take up all these LDL and VLDL levels from the blood and it increases the production of HDL. Why? Because HDL will take back LDL from blood vessel back to liver. So, this is what happens with statins. So, the overall effect is, look at this, LDL is reduced, cholesterol is reduced, VLDL is reduced, triglycerides are reduced. But, the important one, HDL is increased. This is what happens. But there are certain side effects are there like GI symptoms and rashes and serious toxicities are myalgia and rhabdomyolysis. The muscle breakdown will occur. 
<clears throat> and they are hepatotoxic and they are teratogenic that means they should not be given to pregnant women so these are all the major side effects of statins now the next one next class is fibrate the major drugs are gemfibrozil beza fibrate fenofibrate all of them the target is there is a particular receptor known as paroxysm proliferating activating receptor alpha now this this particular protein is a major regulator of lipid metabolism how it regulate lipid metabolism it activates an enzyme called <coughs> lipoprotein lipase now lipoprotein lipase will be converting all these triglycerides to fatty acids so what happens the levels of triglycerides goes down now understand this one ldl vldl is formed by using cholesterol esters cholesterol and triglycerides all of them will combinedly uh, make these particles ldl and vldl when you reduce triglycerides you will be reducing ldl and vldl too this is how fibrates will act now the common adverse effects are now look at this they increase triglyceride clearance that means they are metabolizing or reducing the levels of triglycerides and induce lipo by inducing lipoprotein lipase so they are very good at reducing triglyceride levels so usually they are given along with statin so the triglyceride and cholesterol levels are reduced again the major side effects myositis and rhabdomyolysis similar to statins now the next class is known as bile acid resins or bile acid sequestrants now understand what happens with this now the basic job of bile is to emulsify fat molecules whatever the fat food we take they will be emulsified by bile and they will undergo enzymatic digestion now after that again bile gets back to liver so this is what we call it as enterohepatic circulation enterohepatic means whenever we take uh, whenever we take fatty food from the liver it gets into enteron or intestine bile will gets into intestine it emulsifies and helps the uh, fatty food digestion and then goes back to hepatic tissue now this bile acid sequestrants will combine with if if this is uh, the bile acid sequestrant drug it combines with bile molecule and this complex goes out of the body that means body will be losing bile molecule and bile is synthesized from cholesterol so there are drugs like cholestipal cholestipal cholestyramine these are known as bile acid resins so they combine with bile acid make sure that bile is getting excreted out of the body so what happens to synthesize bile liver will be increasing again ldl receptors so that cholesterol gets back to liver it synthesizes bile pigments similarly uptake of vldl is increased and production of hdl is increased whenever liver needs more amount of cholesterol ldl vldl are reduced hdl levels are increased so this is this is how it happens now but these drugs are not as effective as statins right so again bile acids are together used with statins now there are certain side effects like ga upset and because they are combining with bile acid <coughs> sorry they will also combine with lipid molecules like fat soluble mol medication <laughs> absorption is reduced fat soluble vitamin absorption is also reduced now the next one niacin is vitamin b3 now how does this uh, vitamin b3 is acting as anti lipidemic agent see when it is taken in micrograms it acts as vitamin when you increase the dose it acts as anti lipidemic agent how lipoprotein lipase it inhibits lipoprotein lipase now triglycerides are converted to free fatty acid by lipoprotein lipase when this enzyme is inhibited what happens free fatty acid levels are reduced so it reduces vldl and ldl formation and hdl levels are automatically increased this is how niacin act but there is a major adverse effect with niacin it causes a kind of flushed phase and the increased vasodilation is the reason for this and it results in itching that is what is called as pruritus it also increases blood sugar level and uric acid levels now one more drug is mentioned it is called as ezetimibe now ezetimibe inhibits cholesterol absorption from intestine itself so whatever the food we take from the <laughs> diet we get cholesterol cholesterol is absorbed and this absorption is inhibited by ezetimibe so when cholesterol absorption is in inhibited cholesterol levels are reduced understand this one the source of cholesterol is two things one it either can come from liver or the other one it comes from diet so rest of the drugs they are reducing 
the liver cholesterol production like statins and everything this drug reduces dietary cholesterol by inhibiting absorption of cholesterol but it has got gastrointestinal adverse effects are there but the most commonly used drugs are statins and fibrates so this is about anti-lipidemic drugs thank you for watching this video